What's going on guys? Today I'm going to be replacing the alternator on this 2003 GMC Yukon. Alright, the part number that I'm replacing with is R112011A. It's a remanufactured alternator. I got it from O'Reilly for about $266 and then I got returned the core which is for $27. So this vehicle has two different type of alternator if you're looking for it. It's a 105 amp alternator and a 145 amp alternator. For my vehicle it's a 145 amp alternator so make sure you get the right one. If you want to look for the one that is right for yours you gotta look up through the VIN or you can look up in the glove compartment for the RPO code which is your regular production option. Usually it's in the K category. Now if you go into the glove compartment you'll see that it's alphabetically ordered from left to right and then top to bottom so you got to go from left to right and then you're going to go all the way down to till until you see the k letter and then you're going to see either kg3 which is 145 amp others would be something else with the k so i'll make a list of the alternator size and amperage for you on the screen now if you don't know yours and it doesn't show up on there then go ahead and look up at your VIN code and then you're gonna go to this website I'm gonna put the description in the link down below you're gonna put in your VIN and then you're gonna scroll all the way down to where K is and then you, it'll show you what is your amperage on your alternator so that's two different way um, the other option is to call the dealership and see what is your alternator amperage if you give them the, your VIN and they'll look it up for you All right, here are the tools that I use this is a clip prying tool, a breaker bar with a 15 millimeter socket, a vice grip, a electric ratchet with an extension with a bunch of adapters with an 8 millimeter socket so that it's easier to remove. Um, this one is a 14 millimeter socket so that it goes over to the bushing and you can use the vice grip to clamp it down to push the bushing out. This is a flathead screwdriver, a quarter inch ratchet with a 10 millimeter socket, 8 millimeter wrench, 10 millimeter wrench, serpentine belt tool to remove the serpentine belt. This is a 15 millimeter socket as well. A uh, torque wrench, 3.8, that you need to torque the alternator bolt, the 15 millimeter bolt down to 37 foot pounds, and a pry bar tool to uh, pry the alternator out of the bushing to remove it. So, this is the tools that I use. Also, I use the rag to cover up the negative ter uh, battery terminal cable as well so that it doesn't make contact with the terminals. So when you open your engine hood, the alternator is on the right side. This is the alternator. The reason why I'm changing the alternator is because the battery is not maintaining its charge. So if you look at the battery gauge, it should be maintaining at the 14 volt, not the 9 volt or it fluctuates between 14 and 9. So if you're driving and you come to a complete stop and your battery gauge was at 14 and then dips down to 9 you know your alternator is bad but at the same time when it dips down to 9 you'll see the battery like flashes on as well so you know the alternator is bad at when it happens and then when you are putting a load onto the engine like when you turn on your AC and you run the engine and, and it's at idle it will fluctuate from 14 and 9 as well and it also is going to dip down if it's too much of load so that's when you know your alternator is bad and that's when you know you need to replace it as well. First start by removing the negative battery terminal cable and then we're going to remove this tubing from the throttle body to the intake uh, air box and then we're going to remove the engine cover as well to removing the serpentine belt and then we get access to our alternator. Alright so anytime you're working with electronic you want to remove your negative battery terminal cable first. So you need a 8 millimeter wrench and you're going to loosen up. And I have a rag here to prevent it from touching another electrical component. To remove the top engine cover, it's held on by 8 millimeter bolt. Then you pull up and pull out. And then you have two 8 millimeter worm clamp on each side. And then you're going to get a pry tool to pry this uh, clip off. Then you can pull and take it out of the airbox. So next I'm going to remove the serpentine belt. I have my serpentine belt removal tool here. Here's the auto tensioner. It's a 15 millimeter bolt.
crank it to the right to release the tension and I'm gonna remove it right here by the idler pulley. All right, to remove the 10 millimeter nut, I'm gonna have to pry this grommet out. And then use a 10 millimeter ratchet to remove it. To remove this connector, you need to pry up on the clip right here to get it out of the way. So you push up and then pull out. So you're going to pull up on this clip, this side right here, this part. So it's going to be like this. You're going to pull up on it and then you're going to pull out. And then you're going to have to remove the two 15 millimeter bolt. I'm using a brake bar with a 15 millimeter socket. Next, you're going to need a pry bar to pry this out of its mounting spot. Same on both sides, so you just pry it up. There you go. So next, we're going to push the bushing back out, or else we're not going to fit in the new alternator, as you can see. When I put it in, it's in the way because the bushing is pushed in too much. So we got to push it out to fit in the new alternator. And to do that, I have a 14 millimeter socket that I put it over the bushing outside uh, part over here. And then I'm going to get a vice grip and then I'm going to clamp it down so I can push it out. So you're going to have to play with this and adjust as needed when you're pushing it out. So it's tight. I'm going to loosen this, tighten it a little bit more, and then I'm going to squeeze. As you can see, the bushing is being pushed out, so you can make room for the new one. I'm going to tighten a little more, and squeeze, and that should be enough. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. So I have the 14 millimeter on the outside covering the bushing and then I'm going to squeeze it, push it out and then I'm going to adjust it and then I'm going to adjust it tight a little bit more and squeeze and push it out. Some people put a bolt through here and then they put the socket over it and then they tighten the nut right here and then they're gonna tighten the, the bolt down. That does the same thing, it pushes the, the bushing out while you're tightening it down. But I find it this way is easier, so give it a try. All right, once you push the bushing out, go ahead and put in the new alternator and as you can see, it fit in properly. And then you're gonna put your bolt back in. I'm going to hand tighten this in before I torque it down. So you want to torque this bolt down to 37 foot-pounds. Then put back your connector and your wire. with the nut hand tighten this not too tight put the grommet over it alright so now it's time to put back the serpentine belt this is a V8 engine it's not diesel or V6 you can find this label on top of the radiator cover it's plastic and this is the belt diagram that we're doing 
So I'm going to loop around the crank pulley, the water pump pulley, the power steering pulley, the alternator pulley, and the auto tensioner pulley. So when I pull on the auto tensioner to the right, I'm going to loop it around the idler pulley last because it is a smooth groove pulley, so it's easier to put in. Now to put the serpentine belt back, I'm going to fold it in half, and then I'm going to put it on the left side of the water pump. And then I'm going to hook it onto the crankshaft pulley. Once I have it on the crankshaft pulley, I'm going to start with the left side of the uh, the right side of the belt right here with the ribs going up onto the water pump and then it's going to go down to the power steering pump pulley. Make sure it's all on the pulley. After that I'm going to go up on top the alternator pulley. So I have it like this and then I'm going to insert it onto the auto tensioner pulley. Once I have this set, I'm going to get my serpentine belt tool to uh, release the tension and put the belt back onto the idler pulley right here. So I'm going to go all the way and then pull down. Make sure all the tension is released. There you go. Almost there. Just keep on hitting onto the fan uh, rod, so I gotta go keep going. There you go. So you just gotta keep on pulling all the way back to get more tension before you go da back down. Cause just keep on hitting on this fan, fan nut right here. So just gotta keep pulling back and then Keep on releasing the tension all the way down and then you'll get more tension released and you put it onto the idler pulley. Now we're going to put in the air cleaner outlet rear duct. Make sure the clip is back in. Tighten the worm clamp back down. And then put back the engine cover. Make sure this sit on the grommet in the back. Tighten the bolt down. Lastly, go ahead and connect your negative battery terminal cable back in. So once you're done installing the alternator, go ahead and turn on your engine. And as you can see, the battery gauge is up to 14 volts and it's maintaining steadily. I'm going to turn on the low and see if it drops or not. Now it looks like it's maintaining 14 volts. I'm going to take a test drive and see if it uh, dropped or have any other issues as well. So, All right, I finished the drive and it looks like it's steadily at 14 volts and sometimes it dropped down with like one hash so it's like 13 point something volt that's pretty good usually it drops down to like 12 volts and it struggles with me and uh, so far this this alternator is pretty good so yeah if you have any comments go ahead and leave it down below and i can answer for you and i can help you um yeah that's about it